You can't fall in love with every whiskey. So here's five whiskeys I wouldn't buy again. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So, if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, you know that I am pretty positive overall about most bourbons that I review, most whiskeys that I review. In fact, I'd say I'm pretty overwhelmingly positive. I try really hard not to say anything bad or slander any brands because I certainly know that they're putting a lot of work in to create these products for us. That being said, there are times and in reflecting upon my whiskey hunting journey and collecting so far, there are times where you get a bottle and you're like, hmm, not a hit for me, wouldn't buy that again. And I wanna be able to help you guys make informed decisions as buyers when you're standing in the aisle at the liquor store. So here's my honest take on five bourbons that I have a bottle, but I don't anticipate buying a new one or a backup or trying this really for the foreseeable future, perhaps not ever again. So that's a little bit harsh, but let's get into it and I'll break down my reasons for each bottle. All right, first on the list kind of fits into that category of just unremarkable and that for me is David Nicholson 1843 bourbon this is a weeded bourbon it's around $30 I got it way back toward the beginning of my whiskey collecting journey and I still have a good chunk of it left honestly I struggle to get through it there's just nothing really remarkable about it it's got kind of a thin mouthfeel general weeded sweetness some caramel a little bit of like a popcorn note in there so some corn and grain but for 30 bucks there's just so much else that i enjoy above this i mean i enjoy larceny just regular small batch up at this i enjoy maker's mark just to name two weeds. then you think about like i could get an early times bottled in bond for less than that i can get wild turkey 101 and then you're just really asking me to really stretch it to say that this is worth more than those. So for me, this is one that I, I struggle to get through and one that I probably wouldn't buy again. I do know that there's a black label reserve version that I've heard people enjoy quite a bit more. So maybe somewhere down the line, I'll try that. But for me, for now, this is it's kind of a, once I'm done with this bottle, it'll be a little bit of weight off of my collection and we can just move on. All right, next bottle on the list is one that among its competitors, among its own brothers and sisters in its own lineup it just doesn't stand out to me and it's a little bit more pricey than a lot of other whiskeys out there and that is michter's us1 american whiskey so the entire michter's just standard lineup of their bourbon their rye and this american whiskey they all hover around that 40 to 45 dollar mark sometimes up toward 50. oh and don't forget the sour mash that actually is one of my favorite just low proof sippers Compared to all those though, this is my least favorite of the lineup. I think it's, again, kind of unremarkable. Got more of that popcorn grain note for me. A Little bit of caramel, pretty sweet, some vanilla notes, but for like that 42 to $45, I'd rather have any of the other in the lineup. And then when you think about the whole, you know, spectrum of bourbons and whiskeys that are available, if you go up to that $45 mark, this one certainly isn't one that I would ever necessarily purchase again or feel the need to grab one once this is gone all right next on our list gets us into a classic problem for bourbon and whiskey which is just too young to really impress and that is restoration rye uh, from castle and key so this is batch number two it is aged 3.5 years so not super young but it tastes young it tastes grainy it's a little hot ethanol forward and the flavors honestly just don't really pop I, I don't get that many flavors on this and other than grain and alcohol um, maybe a little bit of sweetness some floral essence there but it's hard to pick out like distinct rich flavors here and um, great presentation a wonderful beautiful bottle the distillery I've heard is gorgeous I really hope down the line they continue to produce better and better whiskeys. But for me, this is just certainly not worth, I think I paid around $50 for it. And I think you're paying for the bottle, you're paying for the story, and the whiskey just isn't there yet for me. So down the line, maybe I'll check out another 
batch or bottle from Castle and Key, but I might give it a couple of years before I feel the need to, uh, you know, replace or buy something new from them. All right, the next two bottles on the list, the last two bottles, get us into this slightly more controversial take uh, world. You might not agree with these, and that's totally fine. Again, I want to I want to put a disclaimer on all of this actually that. If your palate's different than mine, which it probably is, maybe all these are hitters for you. Could possibly be the case. Just for me personally, these are ones that I would not buy again, and I'm trying to give you my reasons for that. But these two, uh, these might get a little more controversial. The first of those is one that fits into that finished uh, whiskey category, but is one of the like least spectacular of those. And that for me is regular old Angel's Envy. Port finished bourbon, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. Very sippable, very enjoyable. Low proof, only 86.6 proof, so really nice to introduce people to whiskey. Beautiful bottle, beautiful presentation. So a lot going for it. But it is more in that like $50 plus category, and it's just decent whiskey to me, especially among other finished whiskeys that I've had. This one sits lower on the totem pole, Again, it's great to add to a collection, especially early on, but for me personally, would I go buy another one once this is gone? Do I feel the need to buy it again? Not particularly. If it comes to buying it as a gift for somebody who's maybe into wine and not bourbon, or is trying to try out bourbon, but has more experience in wine, I think this is a great option. It's beautiful, it's a great gift. But other than that, I don't feel the need to put it back into my collection once this one is gone. Okay, last but not least is certain to be the most divisive. It is divisive among whiskey tubers and the whiskey community at large, and that is Henry and McKenna Tenure. I might have gotten a bad single barrel. This is a single barrel offering, so it varies by bottle that you buy. I paid, I think, 65 or 70 bucks for this, so a little bit over the normal, I think it's like supposed to be $50 MSRP, but usually you see it for more than that. It's 10 years old, so you can't complain about the age, but for me, this one just feels empty. It doesn't have a richness quality to it that I would want in a 10 year old bourbon. Kind of just dumps out in the middle of the sip for me, and it's got more of a like tannic oak than anything else. So not super balanced in my opinion, probably not worth the super crazy hype that's been around it the last couple of years. I know people who say that they've had absolute hitters of bottles. People comment on the videos for me that this is a bottle that they also regret buying or wouldn't buy again. And then some people say they love it. So it is divisive, but for me, just having my experience, I don't feel inclined to buy it again. The only caveat I'd put to that is it's a single barrel. So if I do get another one, I might get it just to test the theory and see if another single barrel really does hit my palate better. And that could be fun to explore for the channel. But just personally, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, this kind of experience would turn me off and I wouldn't necessarily want to buy another one again. All right, everybody, that's my list. That's five bourbons, five whiskeys actually, because there's a rye here, the Castle and Key, and oh, the American whiskey from Michter's. I just don't feel inclined to buy these again. None of them have impressed me, and especially when you consider the price point on a lot of these and the amount of whiskey you can get that's, in my opinion, better. Uh, just don't feel the need to pull money out of my wallet to get these again. Let me know, though, what would fall in your list of five bourbons, five whiskeys that you wouldn't buy again. Maybe you don't absolutely regret buying them, but you just don't feel the need to replace them anytime soon. Would love to know what falls in your list. Do you agree with my list? Are there any here that you absolutely don't agree with? Would love to start a conversation about it. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.